Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. Can you believe it has been almost 15 years since Steve Jobs pulled the original air out of an envelope? A lot has changed since that presentation when the air was arguably more looks than substance, but now Apple has ushered in a new generation of the air. Enter the Air M2. It sports a redesign and it's one of the first in the Mac lineup to get the M2 chip treatment outside the 13 inch MacBook Pro of course. So here is my review on the new MacBook Air M2 after spending over a week with it since launch day. And so as usual, let's start with the negatives and there's a few you should definitely consider carefully before you buy. Also, if you like the custom wallpaper that you see, you can find it in the link below. I personally think it looks amazing with the midnight colored M2 Air. So unlike the press models Apple gifted to the creators before launch day, this one here is the base model I purchased out of pocket. So specifically the eight core CPU, GPU, eight gigabytes memory and 256 gigabyte SSD drive. And there's a few drawbacks here I'll speak later in this video about including performance throttling and the slower read write speeds of the SSD. I find the base model suits me pretty well and it should also be a great fit for casual users, students, writers or business owners to name a few use cases. But overall, this is a MacBook that's aimed for those who are on the go. You probably already know that the new Air comes with a new airy price tag though. Yes, that is a terrible pun. This base model now starts at $1,199 USD, $200 more than the M1 model. This is a considerable premium considering the fierce competition in the ultra portables category and the new release of competitors like, you know, the Dell XPS 13 plus. But I'm not sure I think it's fair that others are comparing the new Air with the Pro line of MacBooks, but I can see why they are. It is a full $100 cheaper than the 13 inch M2 Pro and we're getting a better screen, webcam, MagSafe 3 and a lighter, thinner design on the Air. But this doesn't necessarily mean you should jump to buy an Air. Because for starters, and possibly the most disappointing thing about the new Air is the significantly slower read-write speeds of the SSD. This is something you should carefully consider before you buy this laptop and here's why. Instead of using two NAND flash drives working in unison, the new M2 Air and 13 inch Pro use single NAND flash drives alone. And because of this change, the SSD read write speeds have almost halved and I'm not sure why Apple has done this. It might be a cost cutting measure, but it has impacted the performance of the M2 Air. In almost every single test I run, I'm getting a write speed of about 1,600 megabytes per second and 1,400 megabytes per second read speed in comparison to the 5,000 megabytes per second read and 5,700 megabytes per second write speed I get on my M1 14 inch MacBook Pro. And that's across at least 10 separate tests at various times throughout the week. Honestly though, the read write speed on the Air is still faster than what most people need. But slower SSD speeds does mean a slower and worse experience if you do things like export large files, you multitask, you transfer large files consistently, and you want to do some gaming. Apple did respond to The Verge and they said that the Air uses, and I quote, new higher density NAND that delivers 256 gigabytes of storage using a single chip. Benchmarks might show a difference in performance, but these M2 base systems for real world activities are even faster. And so, you know, basically they're saying that yes, the read write speeds are slower, but the M2 processor makes up for it. Good old Apple, I mean, I guess they do have a point, but it does feel a little like two steps forward and one step back. And I guess now is a good time to mention an app that will help keep this new MacBook Air's SSD squeaky clean, and that is Clean My Mac X, today's sponsor. It's an app I download onto every new Mac I get, and for good reason. It automatically cleans the unused system junk and app files on my system, and that's pretty important because junk files, malware, unused apps, it all adds up over time and prevents your storage from working at its peak. 
And let's be serious, we don't want the read write speeds to be any slower than they need to be on the M2 Air. The best time to get this app is frankly as soon as you get a new Mac to keep it clutter free and performing as it should be from day one. If you click on this button here, as you can see, the app searches for ways to quickly improve max performance. And then once the scan is complete, I'll click on run to auto perform the recommended tasks like deleting system junk, malware and flushing unused DNS cache. So yeah, definitely recommend Clean My Mac X as a must have app on your new M2 Air to prevent it from being cluttered in the first place or to delete years of junk if you have an older Mac. You can try out the app for free in the link below and test it out to see if it works for you too. Now, the other significant negative I've come across over on this M2 Air over the last week is performance throttling. The underside of this laptop does get concerningly warm. This is because this laptop seems to have an overheating issue with its fanless design under heavy load. So performance is forced throttled to keep the temperatures under control. So if performance is throttled, up to 25% apparently in some reports, well then the M2 doesn't exactly have the chance to flex its muscles to its full potential. And this is reflected actually in the Geekbench test that I ran where it scored 7,651 for the multi-core CPU test and 23,011 for the GPU test. So basically, depending on the external temperature and whether you're pushing your M2 Air to its max, this laptop could be consistently held back against its full potential. But luckily, the M2 Air throttles less than the M1 Air and to be completely fair too, performance throttling is pretty standard across most fanless tech these days. Besides this though, the M2 is an absolute powerhouse for what it is. It doesn't stutter with my current workflow, which includes light photo editing, video editing, some light 3D rendering, and having loads of miscellaneous applications and tabs open. I saw minimal difference using the Air M2 compared to my 14 inch MacBook Pro M1, until though it came to the literally hundreds of tabs I had open or video editing 4K files in Final Cut Pro. That's when the M2 Air began to struggle to keep up and I ran to those uh, performance throttling issues. So realistically, unless you have a similar workflow to me, the performance in this laptop is going to be more than enough for you and should slice through tasks easily like a hot knife on butter for years to come. So those were the two elephants in the room, but there are actually still other negatives I think are important to go over. The ports. We get MagSafe 3, two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, and a headphone jack which lets you plug in wired headphones or even a microphone, and that's about it. I found myself seriously missing the SD card slots and it was a reminder of how useful it is on the MacBook Pro for photography and videography. But hey, it's an error. And again, it may be an unfair comparison. And besides, if you're using cloud storage, the lack of ports isn't really going to be a major issue for you. What may be more of a problem, depending on who you might ask, is the midnight color. Unless you wash your hands with soap every 10 minutes or you've bought the Air M2 as a shelf prop, never to be touched, you're going to see fingerprints all over its otherwise immaculate design. I mean, this is literally what it looks like going a single day without a microfiber cloth. If you're part OCD like me, it's really going to get to you. But if you have the patience and care to wipe it down daily, then you can't go wrong with this color because boy, is it a good looker. I don't know, are you also team dark mode? Let me know in the comments below if you're going for the midnight color or if you think the fingerprints and smudges will drive you crazy. There's no denying the redesigned M2 Air is a beautiful laptop. Gorn is the tapered shape of previous Airs and yet it is somehow even slimmer at 0.44 inches thin. It's now more akin to a miniature MacBook Pro than anything else with the signature boxier look with uniform thickness. Some might miss the tapered wedge shape, but I personally love the updated look. The previous MacBook Air wordmark has been scrapped and the speakers are hidden underneath the screen rather than off the side of the keyboard. 
And of course, the Midnight color has a beautiful deep blue tinge in certain lighting to complement its overall dark mode black look, which is Midnight. It all adds up to a premium minimalist look that appeals to me, is undoubtedly modern looking and should age well. The new design is home to a larger 13.6 inch screen with smaller bezels with the very same notch for the new 1080p webcam just like the Pro lineup, which is noticeably better on video cores than the previous outdated 720p webcam. We also get treated to a 2560 by 1664 liquid retina display, but ProMotion is missing here. Apple claims the display is 25% brighter than the previous Air at 500 nits of brightness, and it's more than fine for outdoor work and sunlight, but it doesn't compare with my 14 inch MacBook Pro's 1000 nits HDR display. But that said, color reproduction is great and the display is as sharp and bright as most people need it to be outside of video and photo editing. Oh, and a heads up, the Air M2 is still limited to a single external display of up to 6K resolution. So if you have a dual display setup or more, you're going to need a MacBook Pro, which allows you to have up to four displays. The M2 Air truly shines when it comes to its portability, and that's really the main selling point here. And a good reason to consider, I think, buying this laptop. With the ultra thin 0.44 inch build and its feather like weights under three pounds, you've got a seriously portable machine that is one of the best tech companions you can take on the go. The battery life backs this up too. It generously gives 12 to 13 hours of output without a sweat, and that's on typical mixed usage of web browsing, video watching, music playing, and some more intensive apps like Blender and Figma. Pair the battery life with the $35 fast charger upgrade, which juices the M2 Air up to 50% in only 30 minutes, and you're basically good to go anywhere around the clock. So if you travel often, whether you're a student, you work remotely, or you're even a travel blogger, you'll probably want to make the MacBook Air M2 your home. But the usual million dollar question, which is, is it worth it? There are a lot of things going for it, but there's a lot of things that aren't exactly great here. I think more than others are actually leading us to believe. The slower SSD speed is backwards, the performance throttling is a shame, and the higher price point is something to also carefully consider. But guys, I think we should remember that this is an entry-level Mac. The airline is Apple's most affordable laptop, and so when we stop comparing it to the Pro lineup and understand who this laptop is made for, I think it suddenly becomes a very solid offer. Sure, it's not the cheapest MacBook Air. The previous M1 model is still available on the Apple Store if you're looking for the most affordable Air. But I think with the time that I've spent with it so far, this is truly the people's laptop. This laptop is going to suit most people outside of prosumers. It's a laptop for uni students, it's a laptop for travelers, it's a laptop for small business owners who aren't in the digital space per se. If the read write speeds are going to bother you, if you want the absolute best in performance, then we really should be looking elsewhere. The Air lineup isn't for you. As for me, I'll be keeping this M2 Air around and I'll be using it every time I'm outside the home office. But if you consider yourself a power user, I'd argue that the M1 Pro lineup is still where you want to look at right now and place your money on. And so I'll leave my long-term review up here for you. If you made it this far into the video, drop the code word comment um, MacBook Oxygen just to confuse those who don't make it to the end of this video. Don't forget to also like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more tech and business content from me. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.